Kana, one of the world's greatest tennis players, rose to international fame during the early 1970s and 1980s when he reached as high as number four in the world rankings. His contemporaries were the likes of Bjorn Borg, John McEnroe, Jimmy Connors and Ilya Nastasi, and he reached the final of two major Grand Slam tournaments, going on to win the Australian Open in 1977 and playing a memorable five-set final against, at Wimbledon against Bjorn Borg. Famed for his fast serve, clocked at 150 miles an hour, winning 16 professional singles title and a prestigious Davis Cup record, Tanner became one of the most likeable players on the professional tour. Retiring in 1983 with an injury, he remains to this day one of the most pop popular characters in the tennis world. Visiting the UK in 2005 for the Bolton Federation Tennis Tournament, I had a chance to meet Roscoe and go on to ask him about his playing career and some of his fondest memories during one of the most aspiring times in tennis history. OK, uh, Roscoe, many thanks for coming along today and taking part in this interview. My pleasure. Uh, on behalf of the Tennis Federation Committee and all the playing members, I'd like to start by welcoming you to Bolton. Thank you. And thanking you for taking part in our annual tennis tournament. I've certainly enjoyed watching you myself this week, and it's brought back some old memories of when I used to see you on the TV. <laughs> so, um, the style is just the same and everything. It's been great. Um, can I start by asking you how, you how you came to be in Bolton? What was the connection there? Well, I had met the Nolans over in the United States in Florida mm -hmm. at some tennis clinics that I was doing. And then Anthony came and, and trained with me where I was working in California. Yeah. And um, at that point, we started talking about coming to Manchester and Bolton. Uh, because I'd been here before, not in Bolton, but in Manchester. I played at the Northern Tournament a couple of times and, and then also played at Montreal Hall a couple of times. And uh, I always loved any excuse to come to England. Right. So, uh, Anthony said, well, what if we put together a week of, uh, mm -hmm. week of training, of coaching? Mm -hmm. And so it, it seemed, uh, seemed possible because we have a house here in Europe, in Germany, very near France, and also I uh, was coming over to do some work down in Italy. So uh, it was an opportunity maybe to work this in, and uh, we did, and then also to, to play in the tournament here. Yeah. And, um, we got beat, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, it's a real pleasure to have you here, and uh, it was great to see the crowds that have turned up this week and, uh, and all the rest of it. Um, I'd really enjoy discussing your tennis career in a bit more detail, if I may. And uh, Can you tell me how you started in tennis? Um, for example, were, were your parents a great influence on you as a child? Uh, my dad wanted me to be able to play tennis. My mom took me to all the lessons. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, all the tournaments and things, but my dad wanted me to be able to play tennis, and mm. I started when I was about seven years old. Mm. Uh, but there, there wasn't professional tennis back then, uh, so I was learning tennis just as another sport, um, a, a sport that can last all your life. Mm. And my dad had played uh, club tennis mm. and a little bit at university. Right, great. Did did you have sort of aspirations to become a champion at any point? Did you dream about it, or was it? Well, I, uh, back then, Wimbledon wasn't televised live to the mm. United States, but it was tape delayed or whatever. And, and I remember watching uh, a little bit of tennis matches, hearing about the Davis Cup, hearing about mm. the U.S. Mm. championships, and also Wimbledon. Mm. But uh, I really um, didn't think so much about becoming any kind of pro, because there wasn't a pro test. Yeah. But I did think about trying to get a, scholar, a scholarship. 